I love that song. Uh, any Lauren Daigle fans in the house? Yeah. Lauren is my 10-year-old daughter, Lily's favorite artist, uh, and probably secretly mine as well, since we listen to it every day that I take Lily to school in the car ride, singing it at the top of our lungs. Uh, in fact, kind of proud, fun family moment. Uh, here's a picture of my wife, daughter, and son. We got to go to the Lauren Daigle concert here a couple of months ago in San Diego. There's my crew. Uh, super proud of them. Uh, you can probably tell from the song, from the scripture passage, that the theme for today is trust. Um, and, and those are the words and thoughts that I'm going to share today. Uh, I was asked a couple of months ago to, to speak today and uh, talk about having to have some trust. Uh, honestly, it had me quite anxious, uh, and part of my anxiousness wasn't even the size of this group to speak in front of, but more because, honestly, I don't share my faith that often uh, in front of larger groups. It's more individual conversations, small groups, and so this was something new for me. And also, uh, because I respect this stage and platform and what happens here, I have a ton of respect um, you see, I went to Point Loma. I graduated a little over 20 years ago, coming up on 25, believe it or not. Sat right back over there. I could tell you the exact seat I sat in every single chapel over on your right, about halfway back there. Uh, and I heard a ton of great speakers and a ton of great stories uh, and amazing testimonies in my time here as a student. Uh, and I was overwhelmed by some of the things and uh, experiences that people had been through. And for me, maybe like some of you in this room today, uh, I don't have the most amazing conversion story. Uh, I wasn't saved on the brink of death. I wasn't a former drug dealer or anything else. I, I had a pretty simple, awesome life. At the same time, it was my story, and I think I'm so thankful that I was spared from a lot. Uh, but maybe a portion of you can relate. I accepted the Lord at age five, baptized at age 13, uh, was fortunate enough to go to a Christian school throughout, and had two amazing models as parents that I'm so thankful for and proud of. So really, these last couple of months, what I've been thinking about uh, is what would... Uh, my freshman or 18-year-old self wanted or maybe even more importantly needed to hear in that moment, especially as we reflect here in April 8th at this point in the semester. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I remember sitting there and vividly multiple times processing uh, and worrying about the future. Um, will I have a job? Will it be a good job? Uh, will I be married? Who will I be married to? When will I get married? Uh, I didn't even meet my wife until three and a half years past I graduated at Point Loma, and I had so many people tell me that I, I kind of ruined an opportunity by not finding someone here. Uh, but there were so many, what do I need to do next to get ready for this? What will happen if and when? Uh, and, and ultimately for me, uh, today's just a simple message because I'm a pretty simple person. I know maybe like you, I can tend to overanalyze everything, uh, complicate every single issue. And so today it's getting back to the basics. It's back to the, the KISS principle of keep it simple, stupid. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I coached college basketball for about 17 years. Some of that time was here at Point Loma. Uh, my mom was a school teacher, just retired. My brother and sister are elementary school teachers. My dad was a school administrator and then a pastor for a long time. So the teaching and education piece, it's in the blood. It's in the DNA. Uh, and I say this, uh, and I was always taught, whether through my coaching time or teaching, you got to master fundamentals. And so today I'm just going to break down, you saw it earlier, an old school proverb that was part of my fundamentals. If you learned it maybe in Sunday school or maybe a WANA or if you went to a Christian school, uh, I'm just going to dig down into that a little deeper. It was kind of my life verse growing up. 
You've all heard it. Just hopeful uh, that you can lock into these two verses as we break this down over the next few minutes. Uh, And maybe it's just a good reminder to you. Maybe you'll pick up something new. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. So for some context, I love the Proverbs. Uh, In fact, it's kind of a go-to. I tell people this, somebody gave me the hint one time, if you're ever, now the days with smartphones and iPads and all that's changed, but if you ever get stuck in a hotel room and you didn't bring a devotional or something to read, you always have a Bible, typically have a Bible in the drawer of the hotel you're at. There's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, at most 31 days in each month. Grab that day and read that chapter. Uh, And I know I've stumbled upon that Proverbs 3 doing this several times. But in Proverbs, in chapter 3 there, the first third, there's 35 verses, the first third uh, is specifically dealing with trusting and honoring God. Also sharing wisdom of how you'd be delivered from evil, but also there's some certain promises of certain rewards tucked in there. And then specifically, again, five and six, going to talk about some guidance. And I know for, for me, I need guidance. All right, first part, trust in the Lord. And I just think about this word trust. Um, this part doesn't come easy, at least for me. Maybe you're good at trusting. Uh, especially we live in a society today uh, that's pretty divisive at times. A lot of people argue we're more divided than ever. Uh, You hear things, trust no one, maybe trust no one but yourself. Uh, Maybe you've been burned by a family member, friend, maybe someone you've worked with, worked for. I think everybody's been there. Uh, And maybe just trust doesn't come easy for you. I do know there is value, though, in trusting people and becoming someone that people can trust. I read an article, and I'm always intrigued reading stuff about leadership, and especially now in my life in kind of a work environment, but there was a recent article in the Harvard Business Review that shared in high trust work environments, so when there's high trust at work, employees were 106% more energetic at work, 76% more engaged with their jobs, 74% less stressed, we could all use that, took 13% fewer days off for illness, and 29% more satisfied with life in general compared to low-trust work environments. All right, that makes sense. Another survey as it relates to trust, the Relationships Indicator Survey came out. Top four reasons for relationship breakdowns. Financial stress, communication difficulties, different values, And then the number one thing was lack of trust. Makes sense. Maybe not surprising. Trust matters. Obviously, even to our physical, mental health, and bottom line, without trust, there can be no relationship. I think you've all been there where you've had trust broken, and and that can often end relationship. Fortunately, at the end of the day, Uh, We serve a faithful master and don't have to rely on people to put our faith and confidence. Uh, With the Lord, we have someone who we know can handle anything and everything. And he desperately seeks a relationship with us. So here's where trust gets a little tricky for me. Uh, As you can always tell or already tell, I'm a type A personality. I'm a compulsive over planner every area of my life. It doesn't matter. Um, And I'm sure there's some of those of you out there. And guess what? Things don't always go according to Ethan's plan. Uh, Shocker. Even as a kid, uh, I knew kind of in an early age what I wanted to do or what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, Again, probably another shocker. I love sports. Uh, had some amazing, amazing mentors in my life. Those people were teachers and coaches at a ver- very early age. Um, those people were rock stars to me. So naturally, what did I want to do? I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to be a high school teacher, high school basketball coach. And even still to this day, I have people who have asked or even asked now, what's your dream job? I think I honestly might say high school teacher and coach. Uh, that's, that's really what I was pursuing. 
And for me to stay on that path, I was told or thought, all right, go through the natural progression, probably play high school basketball, play college basketball, uh, get my degree and go back and teach and work my way into coaching that way. Seemed like a uh, perfect, easy, simple enough plan. However, summer actually right before here at Point Loma, I uh, had a pretty uh, severe injury that uh, derailed that playing plan as soon, uh, sooner than expected. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't super uh, talented or great. But again, this was the way for me to see that path through. Uh, little did I know, because of some doors that were open, it actually allowed me to pursue that coaching path a little sooner. I started working as an undergraduate student assistant coach, uh, and was able to dive into this coaching profession really kind of 12 months a year starting here as an undergrad at Point Loma. And frankly, I pride myself on being able to see big picture, yet I couldn't uh, even imagine uh, the ride that I've enjoyed by trusting him. Honestly, there's so many times I wish I could go back and tell my 18-year-old stressed-out self sitting back over there, just relax. God's got this. And I want you to hear that today. God's got this. Next part of this passage that, that uh, has always been a, a key little piece for me is the with all your heart. Uh, not some or most, but all. I mean, you think Solomon could have chose differently there and had that word in there on purpose? Yeah. Uh, this passage reads so differently to me if you just take out those three letters with your heart. Um, and I know for me, I've done too many things in my life where I haven't been all in. It was actually an element that when I was coaching that I would desperately desire from guys on the team, my coaching staff, I want you all in. Uh, because as we know, there's going to be adversity. There's going to be rocky roads ahead of us. So, so for me, I'm able to easily translate that, of course. Christ wants us and wants all of our heart. Even today, uh, you may be at one of these points. It was mentioned earlier and so rightly through. We're, we're at stretch run here. Uh, but you may be at that point in the semester, in the year, Maybe this is the end of your college time here at Point Loma. Remember that really well. And you're just pooped out. You're exhausted. Uh, I actually find that at these moments, it's even more important to trust with all my heart. And again, I don't know your current situation, uh, but I do know looking back, I wish I could have trusted him with all my heart even more. Uh, it would have saved me a lot of heartache looking back at these last 20, 25 years. So again, I, I'm encouraging you today, uh, even if it's just today, hopefully it's the rest of this month, hopefully it's the rest of this school year, but trust him with all your heart. Into verse five, uh, do not lean on your own understanding. Uh, first of all, I love the word lean. I, automatically what it makes me think of is, again, going back to elementary school, probably all had teachers or parents that said, don't lean back in your chair. Uh, I remember that vividly. Why? Because they don't want you to fall. Uh, so when you're leaning, you obviously haven't fallen over yet, but you're teetering. And, and God's trying to protect us. I just visualize God's understanding as having all four legs of the chair firmly planted on the ground. And, but the minute though those two legs go up on the front of the chair... Uh, and are lifted, you're leaning. I know that I don't want to live my life teetering on my own understanding. Uh, it actually scares me when I think that through more. If I had to do this on my own understanding, my own perspective, that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, trying to do things realizing it's on my understanding. I just think of it often. Uh, our own understanding is just one dimension. It's kind of my myopic tunnel vision focused on one little thing, whereas God sees all these multi-dimensions. Uh, over the last decade, uh, I've had some pretty significant issues in my right eye. Uh, this has led to three different eye surgeries. I, I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody here. 
uh, countless trips to the eye specialist, seven, eight different types of lenses and glasses, ultimately hearing from doctors that my vision had decreased so poorly that I was legally blind in my right eye with 21,000 vision. They were able finally to diagnose what was wrong with my eye uh, with the use of a certain instrument called a panoptic ophthalmoscope. So what is that? I didn't know what it was either. It's an instrument that can see the whole with one view. Man, and immediately I thought to myself, uh, th this is like God. Uh, he can see the whole with his one view. Just like my, uh, uh, my understanding often uh, of what's going on, life, on in life is, is limited, they were using all these instruments, all these tests that were limited. Um, I love a couple of these quotes. First one, my wife actually showed this to me just literally last week. She's doing a study reading again, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. And I just often uh, translate my own understanding to be my own reasoning of things. But this quote, C.S. Lewis, now faith is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. For moods will change whatever view your reason takes. And then this is one of my favorite quotes, again, talking about human reasoning and understanding. I actually received it here when I was a student, still remember the class. A John Wesley quote even still sits up in my office. Let reason do all it can. Employ it as far as it'll go. But at the same time, acknowledge, we're going to talk about that word in a minute, Acknowledge it is utterly incapable of giving faith or hope or love or producing either real virtue or substantial happiness. Expect these only from a higher source. Human reasoning, human understanding has a cap. It's only going to get you so far. We have to get beyond that reasoning and get to his understanding and lean on that, trust that. And this wisdom can only come from the biblical truths as we know in the Bible. As I jump into verse 6, we're going to see that little pesky three-letter word again, all. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Not some, not most, all. I want to talk about that word acknowledge. It's kind of digging deeper into what acknowledge means. Uh, I found it interesting for some reason. I had to get something notarized a few years ago, and they call that an acknowledgement. So you're not just getting a signature. It's an acknowledgement. And so there's not, not complicated, but there's some steps to having something notarized. It requires a personal appearance. So it's different than a signature where I can just sign and fax something in. Personal appearance. Second thing, it requires a full review of the document that you're needing to notarize. There's questions asked. They're screening the signer. They're verbally verifying facts. They're recording the notarization. They're completing the notarization. So again, I'm taking this. It's a little deeper acknowledging than just believing. More I was digging on this, I was just thinking, I always hear, you know, how many people believe in God? I think the Pew Research Center saw something last April revealed that 80% of Americans believe in God, for whatever that means. So four out of five people that you'd walk across and come, across, uh, come along in, during the street, in the street would say that they believe in God. But again, I think acknowledgement is a deeper level. It's beyond believing something is just truth. While the technical definition of the word acknowledgement hasn't really changed, the way our society uses it has. So I even say this, you're walking down the street, you get a head nod, we call that acknowledging it. Uh, maybe after an athlete, football player scores a touchdown point up to the sky, maybe they're acknowledging God. But to me, that word acknowledge is translated much more powerfully. It's not just a surfacey hat tip, it's a life altering change. Webster's Dictionary defines acknowledge as recognizing the rights, authority, or status of someone or something. That's definitely more intense than, than a hat tip or a head nod or pointing to the sky. 
If you're acknowledging someone's authority, you're acknowledging that they have power over you. So what does acknowledging God look like? Uh, Recognizing him as Lord of all. Someone gave me this a few months ago, and again, I grew up in a Christian home. I just never even thought this way, but I like simple things. Maybe it's something you can take with you. But I've been trying now for about six months to just start every morning first thought about God. Uh, When I wake up, my mind is spinning already, and I block that out, and I want my first thought to be about God. Same thing at the end of the day. I'm putting that head down. I have a habit, probably like some of you, having phone or iPad or anything else. When I set that down, I want my last thought of the day being about God. I want to recognize him as Lord of all. Acknowledging God looks like being aligned, spending time with him, knowing him personally. Again, there's a depth here beyond just belief. It's craving to know him inside out. There's a level of appreciation that goes with acknowledgement. There's a claiming and putting uh, our identity in him. Uh, You saw it the first time they showed the verse. The NIV version of this section says, submit to him. New Living Translation says, seek his will. I like this summary from Matthew Henry's commentary. In all our ways that prove pleasant, in which we gain our point, we must acknowledge God with thankfulness. So again, in those pleasant moments, thankfulness, in all our ways that prove uncomfortable and that are hedged up with thorns, we must acknowledge him with submission. So the good and bad in acknowledgement, no matter what's happening. I just think there's some depth and intentionality here. Uh, I, I love this Andy Stanley quote and it's been kind of a focus for me here in 2019, unless we're intentional with God, we all drift. I want to be more intentional. And drift can be easy. If I was to ask each one of you individually, I think you could probably come up with an area of where you tend to drift. Uh, I'm asking you, be intentional with God. Trust and acknowledge him with all your heart and in all your ways. And lastly, as we get into this, is the promise. And he will make your paths straight. Or as King James Version says, he will direct your paths. Back to my eye situation. After seeing multiple eye specialists and honestly being fatigued by the whole thing and (laughs) just getting close to saying, you know what, I'm just going to wear a patch over my eye and be done with it. Uh, I literally had a doctor that said, he looked in my eye and was using that instrument I talked about before. He said, I got this. This can be fixed. Uh, In this moment, the unclarity, or as my doctor called it, I, I had just an extremely dirty windshield in my right eye. But I again realized this unclarity was part of the path of growing in my faith and reliance in Christ. And the reality of life uh, is you're probably in one of these moments of unclarity, a dirty windshield moment. Maybe you're just coming out of one. Maybe you're about to head into one. But again, he promises to direct our paths. Uh, I fully believe he will clear obstructions and enable you to go forward. And again, That doesn't mean that life's going to be hunky-dory and nothing's going to go wrong. But even the bad things will be bearable because God is sharing the load with you. And you know he has an amazing reward planned for you. Hindsight, they always say, is 2020. When we find ourselves in the place where the Lord wants us, we can often look back and see that that circuitous path it took us to get there was actually perfectly straight. And what seemed like twists and turns along that path were necessary steps along the path, along the road. So when you feel as if you're wandering, and I've been there, uh, dive in and trust him. He is actually guiding us on his straight path for us. 
All right, so again, as someone who sat in your shoes, was sitting out there, I uh, just want you to know and remember God's got you. And as my, my favorite musical artist, Lauren Daigle, sings, you are my strength and my comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. You're always higher. Your plans are always good. There's not a place where I'll go you've not already stood. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today, this beautiful day. Thank you for the words from Lindsay of hope in her prayer to start um, the start of a new week, uh, one of the last couple Mondays of school in this semester, this year, maybe for some folks in here in their college path and career. Uh, I'm thankful for this place. I hope they can appreciate this place and recognize you, trust you uh, with all their heart. Uh, as we go on our way, help this just to be a, a reminder. And uh, thank you again for the many blessings on a beautiful day. In your name, amen. Have a great day. You're dismissed.